here, Nomadic Fanatic. I thought I would do a quick re request video from uh, David, who uh, asked me, you know, it might be interesting to find out um, what kind of RVs I've lived in before living in this one, kind of uh, what the difference between those RVs and the kind of the path that led me to be in the Tioga that I am now. And I started looking through some of my old pictures and I found a bunch of pictures of all my past RVs. So I thought I could do a little montage here, talk a little bit about uh, everything and kind of give you guys a slideshow so you can see some pictures and stuff and talk about that. And uh, wow, 7,000 subscribers now here to Nomadic Fanatic. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, start from the beginning. So up until about 2009, I was always a tent camper and pretty much only when it was nice outside and in the summertime. But in early 2010, I upgraded to a Ford Explorer as my commuter and I began to camping more, but still in tents. In spring of 2010, my ex bought a 1978 Dodge Vogue Class C motorhome. It was surprisingly a good RV, and we only used it twice in two months. So we sold it two months later to be able to afford some maintenance on the Explorer. We broke up in June of 2010, and I used my summer Pell Grant money to buy my first RV. I found a 1979 Toyota Dolphin on Craigslist for $2,200. I got a ride up there, I fell in love, I offered him $1,700, and he shook on it. I had about 20 days to transition into the Dolphin from the apartment and sell all the stuff that was left in the apartment. I'd planned to stay at Elma RV Park for the summer, and by the end of the month it had rained three days and I found multiple roof leaks all over the inside of the Toyota. I tarped it, left it in Aberdeen, and attempted to check into Elma RV Park. But she told me at the counter that I can't have an RV with a tarp on it, so I took off called around, found the same rule at every RV park within 60 miles. I left Elma RV Park after one week and officially began my urban camping lifestyle on the side of the road. I kept that RV through the winter and finally moved into a room for rent and cleaned out the Dolphin and put it on Craigslist for $1,500. The RV sold in less than 24 hours for $1,100 at Ralph's Thriftway. I then bought a 1988 Ford Club Wagon Van and I was living in the van in less than two weeks from the time I moved into the room for rent. I spray-painted the inside of the windows black for privacy and removed the seats. I put in a cot for a bed and used a cooler for food, getting a bag of ice every day. That van got me through the summer of 2011, barely. The tranny went out while I was parked at Walmart in Aberdeen, and I did the same thing by moving back into a room for rent with Jax while thinking I was going to just scrap the van. But I still sold it for 500 bucks cash right there in Walmart. Somebody wanted it. Two months later, I obviously hated the room for rent thing. I even traded my 1997 Pontiac Sunfire commuter car for a 1984 Chevy Aviator straight across after driving to Seattle to make the deal. I thought it was a terrible deal, but I needed to be mobile. The van made it back to Aberdeen just fine, but wouldn't start for the next two weeks after that. I moved in right away there anyway, in the back of the alley behind my old room for rent. Thankfully, the van did start after I took apart the carb and cleaned it, but it was very picky. I lived in the Chevy van in and around Olympia, Washington for eight months, including the summer of 2012. I got my first solar shower and bathed right off the back of the van at campgrounds. Then in September of 2012, I bought a 1972 Comfort travel trailer for $2,000 in Yelm, Washington. I towed it with the van and paid up front three months of space rent at BMC RV Park in Olympia, right off the bus line. I then sold the van quickly for 800 bucks at Martin Way Diner. But after two weeks at the RV Park, I was already ready to leave. Gunshots, bombs being found, stabbings, theft, domestic disputes with people yelling all night, music, party, bonfires, native sweat lodge drumming from midnight to 5 a.m., I had nowhere to go, but luckily a friend heard and helped me move the trailer to his property in Tumwater for a few months to get away from the BS. Then I found a Craigslist ad in the barter section, titled, Truck and Camper Combo for Trade for a Pull Trailer of Equal Value. It really seemed too good to be true. I emailed him, gave all the details, and sent pictures. He told me to come down and test drive the truck and camper. I drove an hour down there in a friend's vehicle, and I loved the setup. He said he would come up tomorrow to look at the RV, and I didn't believe I'd ever see him again, but he called me when he was a mile away and asked for exact directions. 
I didn't have time to clean or anything, and he pulled up in a huge Dodge 2500 dually pickup truck. I explained that I was currently living in the RV and didn't expect him, and ten minutes later, he said he wanted a trade. I was like, I need like three hours to get everything out, and how do, how do I get my truck? He said he was going to go eat, and then drive me and the trailer back down to his place in Rossi Rock. I threw everything I owned onto a tarp in the backyard and locked jacks in the garage while I went to get my truck and camper. I enjoyed that combo for six months right through the summer and seriously began my nomadic lifestyle. But there were problems. The roof leaked. I had nowhere comfy to sit inside. There was no bathroom shower, just a porta potty that I had to empty somewhere every three days. And the truck didn't run too well either. By July, I had decided it wasn't big enough for me and Jack's. So, I found this Tioga that I'm currently living in on October 1st, 2013 on Craigslist. I traveled with a friend to test it out in Kenmore, Washington. But on the test drive back to the house, the front right caliper locked up and boiled the brake pad. Sadly, I had to leave without a negotiation. The next day, he called me up to say he had replaced the caliper and brake pad and would go down to 3900 from his $4,500 original asking price. We went back up there, tested it, settled on 3750 and I've been living in it ever since. I had to sell the truck and camper, and I knew I needed to get $1,500 for it. So I put aside a whole day to park it at Walmart and Lacey and wait for an offer close enough to my asking price. I bought two for sale signs, some tape, and a black permanent marker. I put the signs up on two sides of the RV with a $2,000 asking price, sat down on the table, pulled out my laptop, and before my MacBook even turned on, two guys were knocking on the rear door. Ten minutes later, the title was signed, and I walked away to my Tioga at the other end of the parking lot with cash in hand. In the last eight months, I've put over $2,200 into the RV to get it up to par. I decided on an RV documentary in October for my film study at Evergreen, and then began the channel Nomadic Fanatic officially on December 6, 2013. The rest is history.